All right, just a really short podcast after I just did a long podcast on the full spectrum magnesium and what that means. So basically, there's three parts of this. The half spectrum magnesium is all the 95% of the magnesium you're going to find on the market, which use a base molecular form of magnesium, which has it's all of its little tentacles have been neutered through solvent extraction and chemical treatment. So that's the first thing, and that's 95% of anything you're going to find. Glycinate, threonate, all of those worlds of pedalate, citrate, malate, all that stuff you're going to find, they're all going to be um, coming from this base molecule. It's a magnesium chloride molecule that they've, uh, or from, that they've, they've got from magnesium carbonate, uh, chalk, uh, something that was attached to potassium or calcium or other things, and then they had to add all these solvents and, and then worse things, you know, heavy metals and things, uh, bromine and sea, you know, if they're using dead sea, and, and then you have uh, mercury and the salt lake. There's a lot of different things you can pull in, and then they, they, they chemically treat with solvents to get that stuff out of there, and they sell you a perfect end molecule, and then that molecule is bought, and then the people turn that into their glycinates, and their citrates and everything else. So that's the mystery is that the actual base molecule is wrong. <laughs> the base molecule is not, well, it's not wrong. It's just, it's not in a natural state. And it's, it's little tentacles have been neutered. I know you don't say tentacles when we talk about magnesium, but I'm giving you just a visual. It's a molecular structure. So that's the first part that ruins what it can do in the body. Now, how does that affect the body? Well, it can't uptake as well, no conjugation. Uh, the conjugation doesn't happen as well. The bonding, um, all of the things that it does through catalyzation of enzymes, bringing about enzyme activity, bring tra uh, the tra membrane transport, all of these things that it's able to do, magnesium, it needs others and it attaches to others or it, it catalyzes others. All of these processes are weakened, especially chelation and the enzyme-assisted chelation because then it's hard for it to bring things out of the body it gets stuck because it's already got these tentacles that are neutered, okay? So that makes it harder for it to stick, I guess you could say, at a molecular level to a lot of these toxins that are in there and pull them out. So, um, I mean, that's what happens during a cramp. The cramp is like something stuck in the muscle, endocrine disruptor, heavy metal, um, acid residue, um, lactic acid, something stuck in there, and the magnesium comes and helps with enzymes to chelate and pull that out, bring it out to the sweat glands or the hair follicle, whatever it is. And so we get that out of the body. Um, that's the first part. The second part is the glass. If it's not packaged in glass um, and it doesn't have the Zechstein inside logo, meaning it comes from Vendam, the only city where this natural state soft stone called Bishafit from which this exact magnesium molecule comes, so therefore it doesn't have to be solvent extracted because it's pure in its own state, um, then it's not true. Um, it's a molecularly challenged magnesium, a half-spectrum magnesium, once again. Even though it's copyrighted and has all these high price, it's still the molecular base is wrong, or it's contaminated, or it's neutered. So... Um, I guess that was still on part one. So part two is the glass bottle. And so the glass bottle is going to be a problem. Uh, I mean, the plastic bottle will be a problem. And so we always choose glass because the plastic is going to deliver uh, leaching plastics, endocrine disruptors, BPA, BPS, phthalates, all these different compounds, compounds we haven't even discovered yet that, we're, that they're realizing that weren't as safe as we thought that are accepted now. They're not accepted in the Europe, but they're accepted here, vice versa. And so they just play this game forever. And, um, and so, um, that will bring the problem with magnesium more than just like cheese or something else you would buy in the supermarket that could be contaminated. Although you should limit that too, um, is that magnesium has keys and locks and it can bring that all the way down into the middle of the cell. So you don't want something this ubiquitous, this, you know, um, important and essential in your body to have these plastic compounds attached to it. So, and most of that comes through surface area expansion. It's not just like just packaging and a lot of the things that happen through industry, transport, a lot of these things you cannot avoid. But it's the, when you pour all of that substance into thousands of mini plastic bottles, then you multiply the surface area. That's when you increase by five or 600% your exposure to those endocrine disruptors. And you take the molecule beyond its capacity to pull those same 
plastics out of your own body, which cause weight gain and everything else, and get those out through the sweat glands, which they found on athletes. They find that in the sweat, these endocrine disruptors being released, and they find magnesium there too, which is normal. So that's the second part, is how important the glass is, how important the origin is from Vindam, meaning Zechstein inside, part one, um, trademark logo on the bottle, because otherwise it's not coming from a base molecule, which is alive, active, and sticky, I guess you could call that. And so the third part of the of this is the um, full spectrum uh, argument is that there is a need for detoxification of magnesium. So its ability to pull these aluminum, especially, and mercury, and all these other heavy metals, and endocrine disruptors, and uh, beryllium, I mean, there's tons of studies on magnesium, it was like 850 on Medline, but all of these these things can be brought out of the body. And so they're always coming in because of our toxic environment. We don't believe that our air and water and, and things we eat and bring in and everything that's in our food and packaging, and we don't see all of that coming in, but it's coming in. And, <clears throat> you know, we don't see if we drink a little Coca-Cola can. We don't see all the aluminum, that, that acidity of that Coca-Cola just brought in to our body. Um, and so... This is how we're getting in trouble. And so this stuff can come out, but you need the detoxification level. And that's at the full spectrum level. You can't get that from the base level stuff. You might be able to overcome a few deficiencies because magnesium is so deficient in the body and in the soil. But you won't be able to detoxify and go long term, medium term, like, you know, release of these these minerals and, and um, through the body, uh, these heavy metals, etc. You want to get that out. And so that's another key to this whole puzzle. Uh, there's a lot of people who know this key, and they buy our magnesium oil just for the detoxification of aluminum. Um, so anyway, that is the threefold, I guess, um, argument for full spectrum and what that is, and how 95% of the market is half spectrum, including all the pills that you take internally. And that's a whole other thing is about the internal over external. I mean, everything's based on the chloride molecule. When you eat, the hydrochloric acid turns the molecule of magnesium that you're getting from those almonds or that food, it turns it into magnesium chloride. That's what it does. Then the body takes the chloride molecule and it goes through acidification processes and fat processes, which are strangely perfectly found in the skin. The first layer, which has a flora, is acidic. The second layers are more fat-based, and it's pushing them through, attaching things to these little teeny molecules, and then those are getting in the body and being used right. All those threonates and citrates and orotates and everything else, they're all being made in the body naturally. If we have a high-dose um, skin level understanding with a pure molecular magnesium to begin with that can conjugate and bond better. So there you go. I hope it was clear to be able to help you see that there is such thing as full spectrum magnesium and that without it, you're getting basically ripped off. <laughs> you're getting half the deal and you're probably just saving a little bit of money in doing it, but getting not near as many benefits from it. So we have proof of this. We have a lot of people, I mean, we have studies on the heavy metal release, but we also have people who call us in. They say, hey, we were using the other stuff, and, you know, I had this, this kind of, like, um, spine problem this guy told me about. And he said, when I would put the other stuff, it didn't help. But when I put your stuff, there was a red column around my spine when I would apply it to my whole back. And it was like it was addressing that exact area. And that's exactly what it does. It does. It's more. It stings more and it tingles more sometimes, even in that that area. So anyway, welcome to the future of medicine with the skin and the transdermal route, and us learning to find full spectrum products that actually can bring health uh, strong enough to equal our you know intense level of toxins that we have in the modern world. So come check us out at theheartoftradition.com. Get the right stuff. It's only twenty five bucks for two months, three bucks a week and in glass bottles. Thank you.